Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over solving a statically determinate torsion problem. This time, it's going over approaching a composite problem. So this is a fairly simple composite shaft. It's just one uniform geometry and material as well, composite material though. Um, outer material is aluminum, 28 gigapascals. Inner material, steel, the shear modulus of 85 gigapascals. Outer diameter, 35 millimeters. Inner diameter, 10 millimeters. 1.1 meters total length at 0.6 meters from the left end. There's a 9,500 newton meter torque counterclockwise. And on the far end, there's 6,800 newton meters in the clockwise direction of torque. And as you can see, I have already calculated the polar moments of area or the moment of inertia. And let's go ahead. We can enter this into the program so we can begin. Okay, so breaking up into segments, well, the geometry is all the same, so just one segment. It's length 1.1 meters. Better select composite. Outer diameter. Inner diameter. Outer shear modulus 28 times 10 to the 9th pascals. Inner 85. Okay, outer moment of inertia. And the inner. Okay, two torques. And this pop up is just helping you if you're given power and you need to derive torque from that and so on. In this case, we just have torques already. <clears throat> 0.6 meters from the left is 9,500 newton meters. And that is positive because it's counterclockwise. On the far end, 1.1 meters, there's 6,800 newton meters. But it's going clockwise, so that's a negative. And it's clamped on the left end. One segment, it's two sections because of the middle torque breaks it up into two sections. So we can draw it, or we have it drawn, and we can move on to solve it. So working from the left, I mean working from the right towards the left, we start with section two. First off the bat, do your summation of moment. And assuming, you know, having your reactionary torque uh, going clockwise, then its value would be negative, meaning that it should actually be going counterclockwise to react against a clockwise torque. It, so that makes sense. On the left, I have all of the outer material calculations. On the right, all of the inner material calculations. First, you need to calculate what each of the materials' uh, reactionary torque is. And then with that, you can find the shear and the amount of twist. I have everything calculated out for you so you can see how it's done and what the equations are. So let's go ahead and do the outer materials answers first. So torque, outer, shear. Okay, and then twist. Okay, so notice that it didn't actually accept that shear, and that's because, in parentheses, it's max. It's wanting the magnitude value. Let's check that now. Okay, then it will accept it. So make sure that you're not putting negatives for shear. It's the only one it wants the magnitude. Okay, so the torque inner, the inner material is hardly taking up any, the inner shear, ok, 
Okay. Then we can move on to our final section, section one. Same process, really. It's just in the summation of moments, now you have to factor in that 9,500 newton meters as counterclockwise, resulting in an overall in a clockwise reaction to that. So let's do the outer values. And the twist. And the twist is in radians, which is somewhat like being unitless. Okay, the inner torque. Okay. Solution complete. One thing I forgot to mention is that the deformation, just the same as axial loading, is going to be same between the two materials in a composite uh, material. One of these, just like an axial loading where the outer material, you could not have it where the outer material elongated more than the inner material or anything like that. Just the same as this, the materials are going to rotate and twist in the same direction, the same amount. They're going to be equal to each other. That's pretty much it when it comes to a simple composite problem. Perhaps you'll see them as parts of a more complex shaft where it'll have composite sections in the overall shaft. Who knows? But this is how you approach it. And it's not a whole lot different, just a little bit more calculation wise. You have to calculate for the in or outer material, but because the twist is going to be the same for either material, the in or the out, they have to be equal. If that was the only thing that you're looking for, then you could just go along and calculate everything for, say, the outer material. Because if you find the outer material's twist, you know what the inner material's twist is already. But yeah, that's pretty much it.